Most people don't have any idea what they're saying. And I mean that literally. I've done a couple of videos talking about how the Jews use black magic. And I would venture a guess that many of the people that have heard me say that think that it's all hocus pocus, it couldn't be true, and that, well, quite frankly, it's all bullshit. I have a presentation here, it wasn't by me, it's by a guy by the name of Wayne Bush. This man goes into a very descriptive explanation of the English language and the whole concept of words are spells. And this isn't a trivial thing. I mean this with every fiber of my being. If you see, if you listen to this, you will get a sense that you probably don't have as to what has been done to our language. And it all ties, I shit you not, into magic. And on some of it, black magic. There's a reason for the phrase, words are spells. Our language, English, ties directly into Germanic runes. Runes were used for magical purposes. If you look this stuff up, you'll find evidence of what I'm saying. So, I would suggest that you give the presentation once this thing starts. It's an MP3, so I'm just going to put some uh, images up about words, and some of them are going to be definitions about words that many people don't understand. Um, but see if you can give this at least 20 minutes. There's, it's two hours, but see if you can give it at least 20 minutes. If you can get through 20 minutes and you're still interested, believe me, what you will learn in this presentation about words, how it ties into magic, how it totally, for lack of a better way of putting it, fucks us up in every way. The vibration of our words literally affect matter. If you saw those uh, videos that I've got on cymatics, that is, the, that is the physical manifestation. You can see it with your eyes and hear the sounds with your ears and see how those frequencies literally affect matter. Well, everything that's coming out of our pie holes has a frequency to it. And if there, it, it gets into some really deep stuff that most people don't know about. We're just not taught about this stuff unless for some reason you have personally ventured on your own study of the occult or the mysteries. And in the process you'll learn various aspects of this. Um, but let me go ahead and leave you with this. Just see if you can give it 20 minutes from the time that he starts talking. And quite honestly, you probably want to take some notes. Download this if you want it. Listen to it multiple times. Take some notes and then start looking at your notes after it's done. And look at the words that he explains, look at the correlations that are made, and not because it just kind of fits, maybe. Oh, this is some shit that goes really deep into the occult, which ties directly into the people who are running and control the planet. It is, in some respects, how we are controlled in this very reality. Um, it, ha it ties into, literally, I kid you not, and most people will be like, oh, I don't have a frame of reference for it, so this guy's out of his mind. This is a restrictive mechanism given to us by the gods. Because when you look at the very words, lan, gu, age, as far as language, uh, lan, you'll see it. And if you want to dive even deeper into the subject matter, if this rousts your curiosity and you want to dive even deeper, go to YouTube. There is a channel with the name of Chiron Last. Chiron, like the asteroid in astrology, C-H-I-R-O-N, a space in the word last. He has a three-part series called The Golden Web. And in that Golden Web series, he, go, he delves very deep into language, our language, what's been done. And he gives you good visual presentation relevant to it. The dude put a lot of time and effort into making those presentations. A hell of a lot more than I did with this. I'm just doing an intro and threw some pictures in with an MP3. Um, if you go to YouTube and look up Chiron Last and you watch his three-part series on language, on top of this, you'll know more about what's been done to our language than most people that walk the earth. And I shit you not.
All right, uh, we are plugged in. Now it's Sunday the 29th of October 2017 and you're listening to the Kraz Files podcast with Adam and um, as usual, podcast go over to the website, my website krazfiles.com, C-R-A-Z-Z and uh, everything's over there. So uh, lots of articles and uh, videos and interesting things uh, going up over on the website for folks to uh, check out and the podcast is also available over at iTunes if you want to get it uh, there and you can also check uh, check it out on Facebook. Put a lot of thing, uh, put a, a lot of great info up there as well, and Twitter and stuff like that. So um, have another website, opensourcetruth.com. Um, so lots going over there as well, and uh, the link should be back up on the uh, Cras file soon. It's broken at the moment. Um, had some problems, but uh, getting back there. And um, well, researcher Wayne Bush is back again. Always good to have you, Wayne. How are you going over there in Texas? Oh, it's, it's going pretty good. <laughs> it's, it's crazy uh, days. Yeah, we've had all those hurricanes and stuff down in, in the Houston area, so it's been kind of trying for us all. But, and now we just had our first cold front that came through, and, and it's dropping almost down to freezing now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is man. pretty unusual for Texas. Yeah, yeah, indeed. Well, um... Always good to hook up with you and do these shows as we move forward and uh, and um, plunge into these uh, different blocks of information that um, we've done a whole bunch. So uh, all our podcasts, of course, are up on Kras Files. People just uh, search through those there, and uh, you'll get all the uh, interesting shows we've done with Wayne. And um, we're going to have a look, Wayne, today at uh, symbols and language. And uh, just going off your email here sort of uh, looking at uh, language, uh, including symbols, corporate logos, these things, uh, anagrams, um, uh, sacred geometry, and uh, reverse speech, which you've been doing a lot lately uh, with music, uh, backmasting in music, of course, symbolism in dreams, and uh, games, tarot cards, playing cards, and uh, also the Las Vegas shooting, if we have time, you might go into the symbolism in, um, in regards to that as well, but um, a big one for sure, <laughs> you've got a lot of research to put together, um, of course uh, a lot of this material is on your great website, uh, trickedbythelight.com, and I always put that up, go up today, and uh, you've been looking um, recently and sending me some emails um, at uh, music, and uh, this as well, which I, I listened to a lot of this years ago. It's so interesting, so we've been talking about that. But um, another interesting podcast coming up uh, with you today was as we move forward all these, uh, as I said, different chunks, chunks of uh, information that we're going through so much on your website. And I think this is a good uh, way to um, run through it as best we can and uh, give you the time you need uh, to go over it. And a lot of people are interested in your work. It's fantastic work. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll get going. What do you reckon? Okay. Well, thanks, Adam. It's always a pleasure to be on your show. And, uh, I'm glad people are, are finding some value in, in, in some of the information I'm sharing. So, um, yeah, today's, uh, subject of the show is language. And, uh, 90% of all communication is nonverbal. So we're also going to look at symbols and archetypes, which, uh, speak to the subconscious. And this includes corporate logos and, on our last show, we looked at some of the symbolism of movies, and we looked at movies which portrayed certain arch archetypal figures such as the uh, Demiurge, the Collective, and, and Sophia um, types. Um, I, you know, I think there's a hidden esoteric language that's embedded within the English language, and it's used here on Earth to, to help keep us in the dark and asleep as to what our true origins are. Yeah, our spirits use telepathy and, and empathy to communicate as is experienced by near-death experiencers, astral projectors, and even alien abductees in the astral realms. Um, and language in our physical bodies keeps us separated from our true source. So like we languish in our languid language. And the first thing you learn when you go to school is, is how to spell. And indeed, our language helps to keep us under this spell and from waking up. We spell words or words to pronounce a sentence. It's a life sentence of prison terms. Just like a judge sentences a man to a life term in prison, 
by pronouncing a sentence, we spell words to pronounce a sentence. And our words become our prison wards, and it's in our language. One of the first things we learn um, is how to write cursively at school. We use cursive writing to place a curse. And a write, R-I-T-E, is, is a magical rite or ritual used in magic to cast a spell. In our language, we use curse words and cursive writing. We cuss and discuss. Words have meaning and are mean things, especially cross words. They can be used to make a point. We use a converse to converse in order to keep us off course in our discourse as a phrase, phrase, F-R-A-Y-S. We use catch words. A story is a spiel or a spell. It's all part of the gospel of God's spell. Um, and so you have books. You know, a book uh, has to do, the word in Latin is liber, which is where we get liberty. So it has to do with freedom and liberty. And books contain cha- chapters. And what's a chapter? A chapter is a secret society or religious order like the Knights Templar. A chapter contains many pages. And what's a page? A page is an understudy and in service to the queen and king, as in pages and squires, like a knight who is well-versed in magic and is more or less a soldier to trained assassin. Um, to page someone is to summon them. Pages summons demons to enslave or imprison our souls. After all, a page does contain many sentences, and a jail sentence is served in a prison ward. Indeed, a sentence is created by words that are spelled out by using letters, and a letter is someone who allows something to happen or someone who does something for someone else, like a blood letter. So, like I said, words mean things. So most words have multiple meanings and synonyms, not to mention many anagrams which the subconscious mind can recognize. Factor in its homophones such as there, there, and there, and it can get quite confusing to keep track. What effect does that have when words with almost opposite meanings are homophones? Think about no, K-N-O, uh, w and no n o knowledge is considered a very positive word yet it's linked phonetically with the most negative word in our language so when you say i know this to be true are you partially negating its reality um about the anagrams there's this um little phrase that uh, I, I show on my website and all the letters are scrambled in the words but uh it reads as the following it says according to research at cambridge university it doesn't matter in what order the letters in a word are. The only important thing is that the first and last letter be at the right place. The rest can be a total mess, and you can still read it without a problem. This is because the human mind does not read every letter by itself, but the word as a whole, end quote. So if you consider that above statement in which the letters of the words have been rearranged, that you still should be able to read it without any problem. And this means that your subconscious mind should also relate multiple meanings to words having many anagrams. So it shouldn't be any problem to associate God is good or the devil is evil. So now consider the following words like live and evil or God and dog or even love and evil. Um, pronouncing the words has a pronounced effect. And there's this science of somatics which shows how all spoken sounds take on a vibratory geometry or shape, like how you can blow smoke rings by forming your mouth into the shape of an O. The Tibetan monks show how sound can be used to form geometric patterns on a plate of sand particles, so the spoken word can indeed create reality. Also, consider the mind's ability to combine words and sounds. When someone sneezes, you feel customarily obligated to say, bless you. But if you sound out the syllables, does your subconscious mind also make the connection to the phrase, be less you. So the very act of blessing someone can also be subconsciously telling them to be less. This is spell casting in its, you know, form. How how we are being programmed through our language to, to go to the sun or hell, well, hello, Heli- Helios was the Greek name for the sun. And the sun in English, as well as other languages, such as Latin, is called soul, S-O-L. We are all said to be souls or have a soul. We have a solar plexus, and our feet have souls. And soul, sole, S-O-L-E, is sun in Italian. You are called a per sun, maybe pertaining to the sun. When a male child is born, he is called a son, S-O-N. And the word for sun is, in German is son, S-O-N-N-E. Hugh was one of the 12 gods in the Egyptian stellar cult. 
which could explain why we are human. Colors and hues originate from the light of the sun. Politicians encourage soldiers or soul dyers to go to war for God and country. Of course, when they die, they will go to another dimension. Die, men, sun. Have you ever wondered why we use the word hello to greet each other? After all, the word can be reduced to hell, the fiery place of eternal punishment, and the suffix o, which means associated with. Then you have synonyms and anonyms are listed in the thesaurus. The, from the Greek theos, is the root of theology, the study of God, and saurus means lizard. Um, A thesaurus literally means lizard god. How many names for government entities start with a negative prefix? The the word nation is nation. You have the UN or UN. You have United Nations. Um, NATO. You have the Nazi Party. NASA. NORAD. Um, NASCAR. NATAS. And I'm sure there's others we could come up with. Um, so do some of the letters or uh, building blocks of our language contain within them a blueprint for the control and possession of our spirits? English has Germanic origins, and it's likely that the English letters have th- their roots in Germanic runes, which are used for magic and casting spells. Um, in somatics, Hans John- Janney uh, studied how frequency and oscillation affects the very structure of matter. So we have all this energy that travels in waves, and Ginny studied how the uh, vibrational energy of sound waves, such as the human voice or music, create an interference that forms geometric patterns on a vibrating membrane, like a steel plate with media such as sand or glycerin. And he found increasing the frequency made more complex forms, like mandalas, snowflakes, like sacred geometry patterns. You know, listeners may be familiar with like blowing the smoke ring with the making the lips in the shape of no. It's just, it's the same idea. And crystals and water are alive and can store memory and can be affected by positive or negative thoughts. And our body is mostly water and, of course, has plasma in the blood. But everything used during ritual is a symbol of an energy that exists on the astral plane. To bring the energy through, the magician must set up a circuit of communication so that power can flow. To further aid in the direction and control of power, the magician relies on certain magical tools to help his unconscious mind, such as a dagger, sword, wand, cup, or chalice, uh, which we'll see are, are incorporated into playing cards later on in the suits. But um, they also have incense and burner, lamps and candles, and you can see entertainers pointing at you or flicking their hands. And there's two types of ritual magic, evocation and invocation. And evocation is used in uh, ceremonial magic uh, and is the commanding of certain forces and entities by names of powers and sigils. And these are done in a mixture of Greek, Hebrew, and unknown languages. Invocation invites higher spirits and the gods. So how do you ruin a language with rune magic? You can recognize the letters in the English alphabet that they have origins in the Germanic runes, which were used to cast spells. And the sound or phonetic value of the rune and its vibratory quality in the air, in space, each rune has a certain sound to it that to be chanted or sung. And this is the magical creative quality that's inherent in speech. The runes can be used to affect the world outside based on the archetypes they represent. And you have grammar or the grimoire. Um, the word grammar comes from grammars, which were old Latin books on syntax and diction. The ancient magic books of Europe, which contained instructions to summon demons, were known as grimoires, the French word for grammar. A grimoire or spell book is a derivative of the French word grimoire. The uh, pronunciation and sound of words affects the matter around us. Um, the ancient Goetia, I'm, I'm not sure how you pronounce all these words, but the ancient Goetia spell books were used for conjuring up demons, and each demon had its own sigil and name. Of course, the Book of the Dead, called the Necronomicon, lists names of gods with sigils in order to contact them through rituals. And consider that spirit angels may be called down through the use of angles. Also, sacred geometry and other rituals use uh, colors, crystals, formations, and chants that can help to open up interdimensional portals or gateways and lead to connections with spirits and even possession. But uh, back to language, you have have prefixes and suffixes, and they can completely change the meaning of words. There's many negative prefixes, uh, prefixes such as dis, un, con, and also ones that mean the the sun or moon, like re and mon. 
M O N. You you have uh, suffixes such as s, which looks like a snake. It makes something plural. The suffix al a l can make something an adjective to describe a thing. Then you have suffixes suffixes like tick or ion and shun. And the suffix ing, which is a rune, takes a verb and makes an action into an object or a thing. A noun just by adding ing or uh, ng. Um, we have con words. Um, you know, cons or consu was an Egyptian moon god. And, you know, it's all a con. It's in the language, the lexicon. It's all a con game by controlling, conniving, conceited, uh, common convicts in a connected, conspicuous conspiracy without consulting us but with our conscious consent and constant consequences. They converge and convene in a Confederate Continental Congress conference to con- contemplatively consider in confidence to conduct in a concealed, concerted effort to converse and conceive and concept, conjure, concoct, and construct contracts that contradict, contrary to the Constitution, to convince the country that we are content. We should condemn them for contempt. All our celebrities and political and religious leaders are icons. We can see with our eye that they're cons, and they even admit it in their name, icon. They want us to buy American. Um, A student might say, I took econ at UConn. My professor looked like Akon. He's my icon. So it's like all throughout our language. But most of our communication is subconscious and is achieved through the use of symbols. Um, so the, the far-reaching extent in which the spell our language is cast on us can be seen in the everyday usage of cliches. Um, our languages are saturated with what we like to call killer words and phrases because that's what some of them do. Um, Englishmen use the word bloody all the time. Bloody well right they do. Some women are considered drop-dead gorgeous, and when they're dressed to kill, they are to die for. She was a dead ringer for Marilyn Monroe. If looks could kill, they would because she will take your breath away. When you just kill for a date with her, sometimes she really gets under my skin and burns me up. But if anyone tries to hurt her, they would have to go over my dead body because I will punch their lights out if they get near her. I'm serious as a heart attack. I'm dead serious. She can be as mean as a snake at times, but she really knows how to kill him with kindness. I was dead set for her. I could have just died right there. I mean, I felt like I had just died and gone to heaven. Eat your heart out. She was a live wire, but at least I would go out in a blaze of glory. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but she really took me for a ride. But anyway, you get the point. Um, I think about the terms we use when we wish good luck to others, like break a leg, kid, or knock them dead, or someone borrows something from us. We say, go ahead, knock yourself out. You know, and even time is not immune to our sadistic ways. We we'll talk about time to kill, or we're just killing time. <laughs> and you have homophones where two words have the same sound but different meanings, and that allows for a lot of room for deception, mixed messages, Messages speaking to the subconscious mind, which scrambles to make sense of a sentence using context with you know double meanings and double speak. So think about the words no, like I mentioned before, and um, since knowledge is such a positive word, but it's linked with the most negative word in our language. Um, and then you have these anagrams. Another way is that the subconscious mind can make sense of anagrams. Um, uh, like I mentioned that that phrase earlier from Cambridge University but it means your subconscious mind can relate multiple meanings to these anagrams. So um, shouldn't be any problem to associate the word live with evil or even the word vile, um, for example. Um, Lived becomes the devil. God becomes a dog. Santa becomes Satan. Earth becomes heart. Love is the beginning of evolution. We've all probably heard of these fun, amazing anagrams such as a decimal point is is equal to I'm a dot in place. Or a dormitory is a dirty room. Desperation is a rope ends it. The Morse code is here come dots. Slot machines is cash lost in them. Um, snooze alarms is alas, no more Z's. 11 plus 2 equals 12 plus 1. A few I thought of are uh, words and um, sword, a sword. Um, even the dem- demiurge can be I urged them or I urged me or I'd merge you, like the letter U. Matrix is art mix. Nergal is angler. Neo, of course, is one. So um, 
we get moon in our SOL, shit out of luck, the soul has died or been bleached and is released and sent to Earth where it's recycled and reincarnated. But, um, you know, we're tricked because it's a game. It's the game of life for the human race. And you have the prefix re, R-E, um, in religion during a revival, a reverend or mini star gives a sermon telling you you're born in sin and need to be saved from sin and does a ceremony for the congregation and asks you to repent so you can be redeemed and reborn. You give your heart and soul to the resurrected son of God. Um, you know, it's just all over the place. Um, you know, just even words like repeat, um, rerun, return, retry, um, revolution, resolution, all those words. And then the prefix mon, M-O-N, means moon. And it's, you know, it can be seen in monuments and the monarch. Um, even the word monster is, is a moon star. Um, then you have the suffix al, which um, I'm not going to get into. But here, here are some more interesting words like the word government. Um, the word govern means to rule or control. And the, uh, the mint, M-E-N-T, means mo it's mental or of the mind. So government literally means mind control. Then you have democracy, and a, a demo is like a show, right? You know, you, you give a demo for somebody, it's not real, it's just a um, simulation, right? And then crazy is, is crazy. So it's like a democracy is kind of like a crazy show. And um, the word religion, uh, the, the, lid, lid, the L-E-I-G means to tie or to bind. And uh, then you have the word God, with uh, G A U D, which is a trick or deception. It's uh, that's what its original form was uh, many centuries ago. Then you have a phrase like um, when the minister is tell it says, "Let us pray." Well, is he talking about P R E Y or P R A Y? And who is us? Is he talking? Is he including him with the congregation, or is he talking about you know entities that are there to prey on you? Um, then you have the Garden of Eden, and you have human beings. I mean these. It sounds farcical, but I mean, the, the subconscious mind can make the connection um, with that. And you have a warship and a war, a warship, uh, and to be saved means to be saved for later, like uh, in a safe, like a safe is a lockbox, right? So you put something in somewhere it's going to be safe. You're just like putting it on a shelf somewhere. You're you're putting it in a box. Or um, then why do we say amen at the end of a of a prayer? You know, when amen was a um, a ram headed. God back in Egypt, um, it just carries on from from previous civilizations, and um, so you know, I think I mentioned soul and soul dire. But then you have a trickster, and the 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 S T E R is is means star, and so you have a trick star, a prank star, a joke star. Um, the moon, it's a C moon, you know, it's a crescent moon. It looks like a C, so. That's why you have lunacy. You know, Luna is the moon, and, and so lunacy is like when you have moon madness. Um, and you have a human race. And uh, E, like if you have uh, e, you know, e is energy, like E equals MC squared. And so um, we use, uh, we have movies. So a movie is moving your emotion, right? And um, so an emotion is like energy in motion. And movies have like a cast of characters. Well, a character is a care actor. And then you have a broadcast and um, a cast of characters. And, and casting is, of course, um, associated with casting a spell or casting a, a fishing rod or whatever. And, of course, there, there are, we have programs on the TV. And it's what it is. It's all programming. Um, music comes from a muse. Um, and then in computers, you have IT, which is it. But it uh, stands for information technology and so it's you know artificial intelligence the machine and you have all these words in computers um, like ASP which is an asp or a snake RAM uh, master and slaves there's even drives called SATA drives SATA <laughs> and then um, but your spirit is is meant to spear it you know it is this this mechanical artificial thing and so your spirit is is there to like slay the dragon so to speak um, then you have the English letter S, which first of all looks like a snake or serpent, and um, you know looks like it's going to 
strike if it's viewed from overhead or it looks like when it's crawling on the ground it looks looks like a s2 but um in two-dimensional space it looks like a sideways wave and in 3d space it kind of looks like a spiral um both paths of energy follows and the letter s is used in english to denote possession which is satan's specialty of course by by placing it at the end of a word with an apostrophe and plurality or the concept of multiplication or, or copies of creation is achieved by appending an S to a word, or sometimes an ES. Um, not only does the letter S physically represent the snake or serpent, phonetically, phonetically it even sounds like a snake. It sounds exactly like the hissing a snake makes when it shakes its tail or about ready to strike. The word hiss even ends in, in double S. And of course, the words snake and serpent are both S words, swords, as well as Satan, who the Bible says took the form of a snake. And then, of course, when you um, want to keep a secret, you say, Psst, come here. Or if you want to keep a secret, you say, shh. And the dollar sign um, symbol is the standard symbol for English currency. And um, we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But And then you have the letter X. And X is you, you X out things to negate them. And and dead people are often shown with X's in their eyes, and you have explicit sex, which is labeled with an XXX. X marks the spot as, you know, as the spot it. And I'm going to talk about it here in a moment. But when we break up with someone, they, they become an X. And I think X is similar to it. In algebra, you solve for X, the unknown. You have the X factor, which is when someone has it. <laughs> Sometimes Christian um, can be abbreviated with an X, I-A-N, or you know, Christmas with the X, M-A-S. It shows that it wants to be Christ. So you have the X box and the X games. But here, um, the it, and of course, this just came out recently, the, the, the remade version of the Stephen King uh, movie, It, you know, it's just now become popular again. But uh, he uh, released that blockbuster smash hit book, It, and the, the video features the, the um, menacing face of a clown while the book reveals the clown's head is a skull with stars in the eye sockets. And the video jacket read, uh, Your every fear all in the deadly enemy. It can be anything, a fanged monster that won't stay on the movie screen, something ominous lurking in the basement or around the next corner. No matter what your biggest fear is, no one knows It better than Stephen King. The forest takes the shape of a clown, but it isn't clowning around. Instead, it terrorizes youngsters with their innermost fears, bringing them to untimely doom until a group of wily neighborhood kids fight back. Thirty years later, it resurfaces, meaner, angrier, and the friends who vividly remember the terrors of their youth reunite to make a desperate final stand against it. In an interview, King admits he was possessed during the writing of the book. So what is it? Sigmund Freud, the father of psychology, invented a model of the psyche which contained three parts to the self, the ego, the superego, and what he termed the id, or the subconscious mind. This was the realm of our fears, scary monsters and demons. This id was considered a sort of third person, subsistent to the conscious and superconscious mind. In our identity, you have Freud's id entity, or the it entity. Of course, we use the word it as a sort of third person as well in our use of speech. And of course, subconsciously we have been programmed to accept the abbreviated ID as our identity, we or id entity. We unknowingly give power to this creature and help create it every day with our thought and speech. We chant the chorus to the song, Let It Be, over and over again. And it's no coincidence that it is the acronym that has been currently assigned to information technology or computers, for it may very well be an artificial intelligence or computer. Um, and you have genre of these horror films that possess other creature um, creature features with it in the title, like um, it lives, it lives again, it came from the sea, it came from outer space, it's alive. Um, it, when Doctor Frankenstein made famous, he he brought his monster to life. He said it's alive. And from the time we're young, we've been told over and over again that it is a scary creature. Um, it's embedded within the recesses of our mind. And on the Adams family, cousin It was a monster. It communicated via high-speed gibberish that only members of the Adams family seem to understand. Um, you know, the eyes have it. What do the eyes have? What or who is it? The eyes are the windows to the soul. Um, in Saturday Night Live, Dana Carvey played the church lady who asked, It be Satan? Um, 
you know, there's all these phrases which I, I'm not going to take the time to read, but you know, tag your it and and all these songs that you know like make it you know make it with you and make it real and you know Star Trek you know, was it so be it and the riches have witches have like the smoke so mode it be and things like that. There's just a ton of examples uh, with the word it. I did um, watch that um, new It movie. Wayne just had a look at it. Did you watch it's, it? I watched it. Yeah, but it's uh, yeah the new I, one. I didn't, the new the new film. Yeah, but it was uh, pretty violent <laughs> was compared it? to the original. Of course, yeah, it was pretty bloody and very uh, violent, and much more sinister. Uh, <laughs> well, for <I'm> sure, <laughs> but you know you're yeah, right about that. Yeah, there's always the boogeyman, isn't there? The the boogeyman <laughs> through all the movies, the fear underneath everything, the it. Yeah. But um, right. I, I found it quite quite violent. <laughs> yeah, wow, I haven't film. watched it yet. I'm waiting for I, it to come out. And, yeah, uh, it's beautifully made. Like it's 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 very yeah. well made, of course, and you know, a lot of money put into it. Uh, but it, it was much more bloodthirsty than the original, of course. Yeah, than the King one. Of course, they're just amping up the the violence uh, any way they can these days. Big time. So. Um, have you heard of uh, David John Oates? He's an uh, Australian that um, he, he discovered the phenomenon known as reverse speech. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, most people probably haven't heard of him, but they've heard of backmasking in music where, you know, if you play a song backwards, you, you hear these hidden messages, but and most of those are unintentional. But David found that they actually um, occur regularly in everyday speech and that the subconscious mind delivers messages that are either congruent or discongruent to the forward intention of the word spoken. And a classic example is when um, American astronaut Neil Armstrong landed on the moon. He declared, um, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And when played backwards, he says, man will spacewalk. Another more recent example is um, American ex-president Barack Obama when he said his campaign slogan, yes, we can. When reversed, he actually says, thank you, Satan. Um, you know, I bought a cassette rever uh, recorder that was able to reverse um, back and forth uh, back in the day, and I tested it out with my mom, and we had a casual five-minute chat while I recorded the conversation. And while we were talking, I noticed our dog was out in the backyard, and it had chased a squirrel up a tree, and the squirrel had stopped like halfway up the tree and was looking back down at the dog and almost taunting it and knowing that the dog, you know, couldn't catch him. And it's been a while, so I'm not sure if I commented on it or not. I think I did, but I mean, I certainly was watching it. But I specifically remember when I played the tape backwards after a few minutes, I could distinctly be heard uh, saying, quote, the squirrel will be facing the ground with knowledge, with wisdom. It was very clear. And um, so I've been going through some songs, movies, and interviews, and um, I think I may have discovered some relevant song reversals, um, you know, to my research. And um, like I said, there are speech reversals are a phenomenon commonly found in everyday conversation as the co subconscious or conscious mind is tapping into the collective unconscious uh, or collective consciousness and sometimes communicates when, when it's passionate or e in either a congruent or incongruent message pertaining to the subject being discussed. So you know, keep in mind these are naturally occurring reversals um, and not intentional backmasking, which also exists, you know, and it's usually used for marketing or whatever, but it could be that our forward speech is mostly our ego speaking and the spirit is communicating in reverse. You know, I'm not sure, but if our ego is in control, then the messages will contradict each other. And if we are operating in harmony with our true spiritual essence, then the, the two messages will, will be congruent. So um, I was listening to uh, Apollo astronaut Edgar Mitchell, and there's a point where he says, you know, I fully believe that we're not alone. And then he says, and have for many, many years, even though, and when he says, and have for many, many years, even though, when you play it backwards, he says, oh, I know it's your alien. Me and them were fighting it. <laughs> and then Apollo astronaut Neil Armstrong, um, he says uh, forwards, um, but as you move further, such the sun was. Like he's describing what it was like to be out in space. And, and at one point he says, but as you move further, such the sun was. And then backwards, that phrase says, so NASA, that's their Earth movie setup. <laughs> so, you know, he's talking about what it's like to be out in space, but, you know, maybe in his mind he's actually thinking about how they're out in the desert, you know, filming the movie of, 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 of the space landing or something, you know, like many people theorize. 
Strange. Um, in, the, in the movie The Wizard of Oz, you know, Dorothy and her friends, they approach the Emerald City and they sing the song about going out of the woods and into the light. And they sing, step into the sun, step into the light. But um, Dorothy says, look, Emerald City is closer and prettier than ever. If you play the words Emerald City is, backwards you hear Satan is sunlight. <laughs> You know, they, they do sort of find out that the Emerald City is run by a demiurgic figure. He's a frail old man called the Wizard of Oz, and he, he pulls the levers from behind the curtains and, and propagates the illusions. Um, another one, you know, I, I think um, the, the Wizard of Oz contains the formula upon death for, for leaving this matrix and going home. And Dorothy repeats the mantra, there's no place like home, over and over until she wakes up from her dream and she's back home. And to do this, she acquires the attributes of knowledge or gnosis, you know, the scarecrow needing a brain, um, a pure heart of emotion, the tin man needing a heart, and willpower or determination, the, the cowardly lying needing courage to overcome his fears. And so you have gnosis, which is knowing, and plus a pure heart, you've got to feel like it's already done. And, and then the willpower, which is, you know, wanting it really bad. So forward, she says, there's no place like home. And backwards, it says, no now safe, wants it. So, you know, there's your knowledge and your emotional um, safety there and then wanting it really bad. And then she says, for, forward, she says, my room. And then backwards, she says, I'm home now. <laughs> so um, another one, Jim Morrison, he wanted to recite a poem he wrote for a song called The White Blind Light. And the reporter says, in that case, you're on. And, and Jim starts a poem with, thank you, O Lord, for the white blind light. And so when Jim's reversed, it says, hell now, hell with the flow of Louis Ness. And the reporter says, our Satan. And I think Louis is like poetic slain for, for Lucifer. You know, Louis, Lucifer, Lucy, Louis, Lucy, Louis. And Ness is like a serpent or a snake, like in the Loch Ness monster, which is called Nessie, you know, it's the Ness. Um, so, you know, so it says, in that case, you're on. And Jim says, thank you, O Lord, for the white blind light. And backwards, it says, hell now, hell with the flow of Louis Ness, our Satan. <laughs> and Bob Dylan was interviewed on the show 60 Minutes. And um, Ed Bradley says, uh, why do you still do it? Why are you still out there or out here? And, and Dylan says, it goes back to that destiny thing. And I made a bargain with it a long time ago. And I'm holding up my end. And he said, uh, he's asked, what's, what's your, what was your bargain? And Dylan says, to get where I am now. And he says, should I ask who you, whom you made the bargain with? And, and Bob says, with the chief commander. And he's asked, on this earth? And Dylan laughs and says, on this earth in the world we can't see. So when he says, and I made a bargain with it, forwards, is, and when you reverse it, it says, um, they soon begat the demon, or, or maybe it says, um, with only God, the demon. It's hard to tell. I mean, I don't, it's hard to tell if he's like saying the name of a demon, like um, Zumbi God or something. I, I've never heard of the word, but um, I thought it was an interesting one, so I included it. Uh, Madonna has a song called Illuminati, and in the lyrics she says, it's not pentagrams or witchcraft, it's not trying to stack for cash, black magic or Gaga, Gucci or Prada. And backwards, she says, collaboration, 100% fact, snakes, sex, and the ash craft. And then it sounds something like, I actually was mayor of Camp Kazi. And I'm like, oh, what the heck's Kazi? And I was like looking online, and from Urban Dictionary, it says, Kazi is a, a man with an enormous penis and knows how to please women sexually. A, a big fan of the ladies, a love sex god. So I don't know. <laughs> That's probably, um, the last line probably is meaningless, but... Who knows? Um, Katy Perry in the song Firework, um, she says, there's a spark in you, you just got to ignite. And backwards, it sounds like, we'll hand the light to you, will you bow to Satan? Um, of course, Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven, uh, many people know about all the references to Satan when you play it backwards, and I'm not going to list those. But um, the one I found um, forwards, it's at the very end of the song, he says, the stairway to heaven. And when you play it backwards, it says, a black witch, hear white sun. Of course, a lot of people say that it says, uh, play backwards, hear word sun. But if you listen to the vowels and the consonants, I, I, I think mine's closer. Um, then you, you the song, Hotel California. Um, in the chorus, it says, Hotel California, such a lovely place, such a lovely place, such a lovely face. 
plenty of room at the Hotel California any time of year, any time of year. And you play that back, it says, tape the mask in it, tape the mask in it, play it all backwards, for hit then more read us, see it reverses, see it reverses, see it reverses, play it all backwards. Another part of the song is um, whether he's talking about a prison and it says, relax, said the night man, we are programmed to receive. You can check out any time you like, but you can never leave. And when you play that back, it says, the moon magnet mister behind the mask and he lies like Satan. He sends mankind to the sun, mankind to the sun. And the, the part where he says he sends mankind, mankind to the sun, it's very clear. Um, um, the Manfred Mann's Earth Band um, had the song Blinded by the Light, which was written by uh, Bruce Springsteen. And um, forwards is a part that says make it, and backwards it says play a game. And in Bruce's version, um, the part where he says, um, Mama always told me not to look into the sights of the sun. Whoa, but Mama, that's where the fun is. It says when you play it backwards, it says, I am my own cause of center man devil. Not a sunglass guy, so there's nicker of animal soul man. You know, it's, that, that backwards, that's almost as crazy as what the lyrics are forward. It's a <laughs> pretty crazy song. Um, yeah, the song Dreamweaver by Gary Wright, um, it says, uh, though the dawn may be coming soon, there still may be. And backwards, um, he says, uh, see them with Satan, Lucifer. And, of course, Lucifer, as the light bringer, has, off, has been associated with Venus, the morning star, and, and thus the dawn. Um, the song Spirit in the Sky by Norman Greenbaum, he says, yeah, you tell yourself you know it's a must, got to have a friend in Jesus. And you play it back and says, ah, I see you, Satan, there for banging a song. He'd want me pray, Satan. Um, another part of the song says, uh, never been a sinner, I never sinned. You play that back. It says, and they smite on the snake of money. And then like the key part of the song where it goes, uh, the spirit in the sky, that's where I'm going to go when I die. When I die and they lay me to rest, I'm going to go to the place that's the best. Go to the place that's the best. You play it back. It says uh, something sounds like saved. I'd see it from the moon, saved. I'd see it from the moon, the moons of Satan. And then they hide and then they, the eyes, the night they would but the mercy they hide in the spirits. Um, that's you know, it's quite a long stretch of words there. It's, you know, it'd be pretty hard to string a bunch of meaningful sounds that actually make up words um, that convey a message. Uh, in the movie Daredevil, there's a scene where the Daredevil's talking to a man dying on the railroad tracks, and he tells him, uh, "Hey, that light at the end of the tunnel. Guess what? That's not heaven. Um, it's the C train." And then backwards it says, "Hey, handsome, hail Satan." Unos to the knave, Yalda dead. Uh, and a knave is a jack or an assassin, and Yaldabaoth is the name of the uh, demiurge or false god, also known as the devil. Um, Dio has a song called Master of the Moon, and the album cover says this big demon-looking thing, and he's like, holding the moon or an orb. But uh, forwards, when he sings Master of the Moon, when you play it back, it says Moon Before a Sun. Um, Soundgarden's song Black Hole Sun it, it says uh, in disguises no one knows hides the face lies the snake the sun and backwards it says the snake uh, he sits inside she lives inside soon my one cis eye snake um, Neil Young Heart of, you know it's like trying to man this is all negative messages and like I, there's got to be some good songs out there that are you know, positive, and I'm like, what songs? I'm like, oh, the song Heart of Gold, you know, that's a beautiful song about, you know, having a heart of gold. So I go and I listen to Neil Young's Heart of Gold, and the part where he says, I've been a miner for a heart of gold, and I play it back and says, oh, oh, put on, oh, oh, print our money. <laughs> and then the part where he says, and I'm getting old, you play that back, and he says, oh, want to make money. And so, you know, maybe when he wrote it, it was like he had great intentions and it was a beautiful song. And But when he got in the recording studio, maybe he's thinking about the, the money he's, he's going to make or something. I don't know. Um, Tele-evangelist Billy Graham, um, he's the part where he says, uh, he says, God's message. And I played it back and it said, G. Satan's log. You know, so it's like a book or a Bible is kind of a, a log that has a message anyway. Um George Bush, when he says, uh, he's talking about there's a ch still a chance for this, there's a real chance for this new world order. And when he says, 
chants at this new world order, um, when he play back, it says, heard all our wish at this ash. And I don't know if it's, you know, you're going to hurt everyone up or, you know, or whether he's something you heard. I heard that, you know, but it says, heard all our wish at this ash. Um, I was trying to find another song that's real positive, and so I thought of the song um, Bring Me to Life by Evanescence. And forwards it says, How can you see into my eyes like open doors, leading you down into my core where I become so numb? Without a soul, my spirit's sleeping somewhere cold until you find it there in me and lead me back home. Wake me up. Wake me up inside. I can't wake up. Wake me up inside. Save me. And backwards um, it says, I should praise you, I should praise you. Oh, oh, take me in paradise or you'll lose control. Animal snipping, and then there's a part I can't make out, and it says, whoa, sinking. One more spark within me, one one more smile is blinding me. Smile with, with, within, smile on with me, swing with Ra. So that's that's all my uh, speech reversals that I found like within a week. <laughs> um, and I, I've got um, links to where you can click on both the forward and backwards on, on my page on the website where you can listen to them yourself and even download them um, if you like. But, I mean, they're not all crystal clear, of course, um, but um, hopefully you can hear what I'm hearing. And, you know, let me know if you do or don't. I'm interested in that. Um, so, yeah, most of our communication is subconscious, and it's achieved through the use of symbols, and uh, which obviously can speak to our subconscious directly. And um, logos, the symbols speak indirectly to the, the, the subconscious mind and their colors, shapes, images, and meanings can influence our thoughts without even being aware of it. And almost all corporate logos use one of the following forms, a sun, moon, star, pyramid, eye, serpents. Um, our mind has unconscious reactions to different colors even, like you know, red means stop and yellow is caution, green is go. Um, but you know, some Illuminati logos include the Freemason G within the square and compass, uh, the pyramid, and all-seeing eye on the back of the do- American dollar, and Columbia pictures where the goddess is holding up the torch of enlightenment, which um, most likely represents Prometheus or Lucifer holding up the fire in a fennel stalk. Or more recently, I discovered Inanna in the Sumerian text is depicted as holding holding a torch up. And uh, she later became Venus. So, and of course, Venus was associated with Lucifer by the church, too. So, um, then you have Paramount Pictures, which shows a pyramidic mountain with a, a halo of, of stars over the top, which kind of looks like a sun. And you have the CBSI and the NBC Peacock, um, Time Warner Cable with the eye with a spiral in it. And then even Walt Disney has a like a pyramidic castle, like the castle is like a shape of a pyramid or triangle. Um, Rap artists such as Jay-Z and Beyonce use the, the witch's triangle of manifestation to manifest and amplify the energy of the ritual performance. Uh, according to this book I have called Encyclopedia of Wicca and Witchcraft um, by Robin Grimasi, is the triangle is shown um, as it's used in ritual and explains, quote, triangle of manifestation is a phrase indicating the principle behind magical manifestation. The basic principle is rooted in the number three. According to metaphysics, in order to manifest something, three components must come together. These components are time, space, and energy. Accordingly, if one selects a space and a time and then directs energy there, a manifestation occurs, end quote. And, you know, I'm looking through the book and I'm flipping through and there I see that, that their hands are forming this triangle just like Jay-Z does. In the, and it's like, wow, that's the same symbol. <laughs> um, and other pyramid logos include uh, AOL, Infinity, Mercedes, Mitsubishi, Adobe, Citgo, Ameritrade, Fidelity Investments, uh, Lexus, and uh, Illuminati Online. And on my website, I have hundreds of logos on my logos page, which I've divided into categories such as you know sun, moon, stars, and so on. Um, of course, sun logos... Um, Many, many companies want to wish, I mean, they wish to associate the vital life giving energy of the sun with their products. So, some interesting sun logos include uh, Sun Trust, Sun Smart, Sun Trance, Sun Kissed, Run to the Sun, Sun Direct, Go for Sun, Soul Collective, Rising Soul, Funeral Tracker, Helio, Sun Catcher, Race to the Sun, Shell, which uses a, a yellow rising sun, Discover, Discover, um, Electrosol, 
Lysol, uh, Lucis Trust, Repsol, Frito Lay, whose slogan is "Food for the Fun of It," Food for the Fun of It, um, the Arizona State Sun Devils, Sun Harvest, Sun Lion, Capri Sun, um, and even like pen tennis balls wouldn't look like a sun. Um, the symbol of the sun has been invoked in the Olympic Games, where the parabolic uh, cauldron functions as a mirror to light the torch by the rays of the sun. And the torch is commemorative of the fire that Prometheus, or Lucifer, stole from the gods, and it must be kept burning on a relay circuit of human runners. Um, of course, the sun um, and subconscious programming, you, you've got a multitude of ways in which we're programmed to go to the light or sun. Um, first of all, Christianity tells us that when we die, we'll be with the son of God, or that we need to become enlightened. Um, you know, in Buddhism, it's reinforced through many phrases such as, you know, you see the light or the light at the end of the tunnel. And we tell each other to lighten up or make light of a situation. And we light up a cigarette or drink a light beer, maybe a Bud Light. <laughs> there are highlights, which are the high points. But, you know, consider um, we are all familiar with the phrase trick of the light. And we're all looking for our place in the sun and vacations in the sun at a place where we can have fun in the sun and sun worshippers lie in the sun and we're you know subconsciously programmed with these subliminal messages that, that um, instill within us positive associations with the sun and its color gold in fact one of the definitions the dictionary gives for soul or sun is alchemical gold which is a gold metal and like I mentioned earlier Neil Young sings I've been a miner for a heart of gold gold is the most valuable precious metal on earth and children receive gold stars in school if they do well and the sun of course is been depicted as a gold star and angels wear gold halos king wears kings wear gold crowns and the sun wears a gold crown of thorns or a corona streets of heaven are paved with gold a pot of gold lies at the end of the rainbow and then the holy grail is a, a golden cup or you win a gold cup as a trophy athletes go for the gold for gold medals and if a musician sells so many copies of an album they receive a gold record um, the Oscar, the Emmy, and the Golden, Golden Globe are all gold statues um, awarded to the, the best actors and actresses who are members of an actor's guild, a, a term associated with gold, and a, a variation of which guild, G-I-L-D, means to deceive. You put on a, a gold wedding band, you have the golden rule, the golden mean ratio, the golden arches of McDonald's, and the Golden Gate Bridge. Um, Something's as good as gold, and silence is golden. You retire in your golden years. The happy Buddha is gold, and it's this raw, raw attitude that um, they count on. <laughs> so, in the movies, the hero always right off under the sunset, and and finally, the, the smiling, happy face that says, "Have a nice day," is a yellow sun. So, if someone tells you to have a nice day, and then another person you tells you to have a nice day and are you only left with a quarter of a nice day you know you have if you have something um you're cutting it in two but if you have these moon logos like dreamworks pictures which features a boy sitting on the crescent moon with a fishing pole and the, the waters below presumably of earth right and you know dancing with the stars uses the moon um moon tower blue moon one significant symbol used with the moon is that of the siren who lures sailors to the rock with their sweet singing and beautiful song. And um, you have this Miller High Life um, siren symbolism where this sign has uh, these oar paddles in an X shape and um, a witch with a pointed hat sitting on a crescent moon with stars behind her. And she's holding up a golden glass of beer just like Columbia. And the sign reads, Fishing, reel in the high life. Um, in many songs, the moon has been romanticized and its alluring presence can be felt in such classics such as Fly Me to the Moon and Blue Moon, Paper Moon and Moon River. Of course, to rive means to split in two. So when we die, we, we put R.I.P. or R.I.P. on the tombstone. But of course, you have the, da the dark aspect of the moon too, which is revealed in um, the old devil moon. Were you going to say comment on something? Oh, I'm not sure. Um, but Hollywood has the James Bond film uh, Moonraker, which implies that the moon could be raking something. And award-winning Moonstruck alludes to the spell that the moon has over our minds. Other movies include Bad Moon, Hunter's Moon, Temptress Moon, 
Liar's Moon, Blood Moon, Bitter Moon, Warlock Moon, Moonlight Express, Destination Moon, Radar Men from the Moon, Project Moon Base, and in the movie The Truman Show, The True Man Show, the moon was used as a home base for perpetrating a fake world and false reality to its duped victim, Truman. Um, the eclipse is the union or marriage of the sun king and the moon queen and has been used prominently in shows such as Twilight, The Ring, Heroes, and uh, even by Loco, Lycos and TNT um, as logos by corporations. Um, Saturn logos usually show the ring as a scythe blade such as the Nike swoosh. And it can also be seen with DirecTV, Bud Light, Saturn cars, and Internet Explorer Cubes are also associated with Saturn. Um, so you have the Nintendo GameCube and Gateway Computers. The Star of David a hexagram is also associated with Saturn because of the hexagonal energy vortex at the, at the pole of Saturn. Um, pyramid logos include Columbia Pictures as the goddess stands on a stepped pyramid. Paramount Pictures um, is a pyramid shaped and surrounded by the halo of stars. Um, you mentioned Disney's Castle. And um, Mitsubishi Motors, Mercedes-Benz, Lexus, Infinity, Cat, uh, Illuminati Online. Um, and of course, the all-seeing eye on the back of the American dollar bill. The all-seeing eye symbol can be seen in logo CBS or Columbia Broadcasting System. Uh, Time Warner Cable, I think MI5, uh, Bob Dylan's logo, LucasArts. And the Eye of Horus was a popular ancient Egyptian motif. It's become very in vogue for celebrities to pose with one eye hidden or covered and can be seen in countless advertisements and movie posters. Um, you have the G logo, which is also seen a lot. It's the Freemasonic G, which may represent the sun, which is the musical note G, Sol, and in the musical scale. Um, our sun, Sol, is classified as a G star. You also have a G shock. G Star Ra, the Gatorade G, um, Energy, G Power, G Sun Components, US Solar G, and even one called G Sun. Um, some star logos include the Dallas Cowboys, the Macy's Red Star, whose slogan is the magic of Macy's, Walmart, Sirius Satellite Radio, which is the dog star, um, Sirius, Converse, Heineken, EA Sports, um, Slogan's It's in the Game. Texaco, Reverb Nation, and the rock band Rush, who uses the pentagram. Um, not to take anything away from Rush, I, I love them as a band. But um, the five pointed star is likely associated with Venus, which is said to etch the shape of a pinnacle as it moves through the sky. And the eight pointed star is also an asterisk and is associated with Inanna, the earlier Sumerian Venus. 666 logos are extremely intriguing to people. and some forms are the early curly Q and the writings of the words Walt Disney. And then you have Lucius, Triple Sec, Monster Energy Trink, whose uh, three claw marks are the number six in Hebrew and is an example of what's called gematria or Hebrew numerology, which the elite use extensively in their rituals. Uh, CERN and the Universal Product Barcode, uh, use 666. And you can also take the form of Celebrities giving the OK sign with three fingers surrounding the circle. And of course, 666 is you know, the number of the beast in the Bible. Man, but I think maybe what it symbolizes is um, you know, mankind is carbon based, and carbon 12 has six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. So it's the number of man. Also, 666 is, two, the .666 is two thirds. Um, according to the Bible, one third of the angels fell from heaven to back Lucifer in his rebellion against God. Um, then you have serpent logos. Um, one prominent one's the Hermetic Caduceus, which has intertwined snakes around the staff that the uh, medical community uses. I think AMA, the American Medical Association, uses it. Um, the Alpha Romeo la logo depicts a man being eaten by a serpent, which is uh, reminiscent of perhaps uh, Quetzalcoatl in Mayan mythology. The Welcome Trust uses a serpent. serpent. One of the logos of BA Sports, MMA logos, looks like the head of a serpent, which is not surprising since Inky or Ia had the serpent for a symbol. Um, some light logos are Sylvania, Bud Light, Lucis Trust, Lucent Technologies, Quest, whose slogan is Ride the Light. 
Um, the next section is uh, archetypes. And uh, Carl Jung said, uh, all the most powerful ideas in history go back to archetypes. Um, an archetypal um, content expresses itself first and foremost in metaphors. And he said the contents of the collective unconscious are known as archetypes, primordial images that reflect basic patterns that are common to us all and which have existed universally since the dawn of time. He said there, is a, there are as many archetypes as there are typical situations in life. Endless repetition has engraved these experiences into our psychic constitution, not in the forms of images filled with content, but at first only as forms without content, representing merely the possibility of a certain type of perception and action. It says, the primordial image or archetype is a figure, be it a daemon, a human being, or a process that constantly recurs in the course of history and appears wherever creative fantasy is free, freely expressed. Essentially, therefore, it is a mythological figure. In each of these images, there is a little piece of human psychology and human faith, a remnant of the joys and sorrows that have been repeated countless times in our ancestral history. And according to Jung, there's four main ones, the, the shadow, the anima, the animus, and the self. But there's 12 archetypes, and they're um, creator, caregiver, ruler, the jester or trickster, um, every man, the lover, hero, outlaw, magician, the innocent fool, and uh, explorer and sage. And Joseph Campbell said, the hero journey is inside of you. Tear off the veils and open the mystery of yourself, end quote. And then, um, so you have these 12 shadow archetypes, and they're sorcerer, dictator, victim, shadow witch, addict, idiot, trickster, destroyer, slave, shadow mother, hag, and hermit. Um, he said, uh, he wrote a great deal about the archetypes, and um, he said, he theorized uh, about the collective unconscious. He said, in addition to our immediate consciousness, which is of a thoroughly personal, personal nature, which we believe to be the only empirical psyche, there exists a second psychic system of a collective, universal, and impersonal nature, which is identified in all individuals. This collective unconscious does not develop individually, but is inherited. It consists of pre-existent forms, the archetypes, which can only become consciously secondarily, and uh, which can only become conscious secondarily, and which give definite form to certain psychic contents. He said, the trickster is a primitive cosmic being of divine animal nature, divine dash animal nature. On the one hand, superior to man because of his superhuman qualities, and on the other hand, inferior to him because of his unreason and unconsciousness, end quote. But um, he says, what actually happens is that the conscious mind is then able to free itself from the fascination of evil and is no longer obliged to live it compulsively. The darkness and the evil have not gone up in smoke. They have merely withdrawn into the unconscious owing to loss of energy, where they remain unconscious so long as all is well with the conscious. But if the conscious should find itself in a critical or doubtful situation, then it soon becomes apparent that the shadow is not dissolved into nothing, but is only waiting for a favorable opportunity to reappear as a projection upon one's neighbor. If this trick is successful, there is immediately created between them that world of primordial darkness where everything that is characteristic of the trickster can happen, even on the highest plane of civilization. Um, and Carl Jung stated the shadow to be the unknown dark side of the personality. He said the shadow in being instinctive and irrational is prone to psychological projection in which a perceived personal inferiority is recognized as a perceived moral deficiency in someone else. Young writes that if these projections remain hidden, quote, the projection-making factor, the shadow archetype, then has a free hand and can realize its object, if it has one, or bring about some other situation characteristic of its power. These projections insulate and harm individuals by acting as a constantly thickening veil of illusion between the ego and the real world. He said, uh, a group experience takes place on a lower level of consciousness than the experience of an individual. This is due to the fact that when many people gather together to share one common emotion, the total psyche emergent from the group is below the level of the individual psyche. If it is a very large group, the collective psyche will be more like the psyche of an animal, 
which is the reason why the ethical attitude of large organizations is always doubtful. A psychology of a large crowd inevitably sinks to the level of mob psychology. If therefore I have a so-called collective experience as a member of a group, it takes place on a lower level of consciousness than if I had experienced by myself alone. I was young from this book, um, The Archetypes and the Collective Unconscious. And lastly, he said, there is good reason for supposing that the archetypes are the unconscious images of the instincts themselves. In other words, that they are patterns of instinctual behavior. Um, so I'm going to mention a couple of uh, like metaphors and allegories. One is um, Plato's allegory of the cave. And Ellis, Ellis Washington writes, quote, in his allegory, humanity lives deep inside the cave and interprets life by watching shadows reflected on the wall by fire. Here, objects that are seen are not real, according to Plato, but literally mimic the real forms. It's a comprehensive and systematic effort by Plato to explain how limited our perceptions really are, end quote. It says, the, the objects that are seen, according to Plato, are not real, but literally mimic the real forms. In the allegory of the cave expressed in Republic, the things that are ordinarily perceived in the world are characterized as shadows of the real things, which are not perceived directly. That which the observer understands when he views the world mimics the archetypes of the many types and properties of things observed. So like the fire that casts light on the walls of the cave, the human condition is forever bound to the impressions that are received through the senses. And then this other one is called the Hymn of the Pearl, and it's a hymn in the Gnostic uh, book, Acts of Thomas, and it tells the story of a boy sent to Egypt uh, to retrieve a pearl from a serpent. And during the journey, he forgets his true origin and his family. He's reminded of his past when he receives a letter sent from the King of Kings. He retrieves the pearl, returns home, and is reunited with his family. And the hymn speaks to the notion that we are spirits lost in a world of matter and forgetful of our true origin. Inside us, we have a pearl, the divine spark of light or light power, the invaluable treasure hidden within. And there's this, uh, one of my favorite images with symbolism is, is called the Flammarion engraving. It's, there's a colorized, colorized version, which is really nice, too. And the engraving shows a man clothed in a long robe carrying a staff. He's kneeling on the ground, and his head, shoulders, and one of his arms are passing through the division of the starry sky and the earth. And he discovers a realm far beyond the heavens. So um, symbols are external projections formed from universal archetypes within us. Joseph Campbell said, quote, A symbol, like everything else, shows a double aspect. We must distinguish, therefore, between the sense and the meaning of the symbol. It seems to me perfectly clear that all the great and little symbolical systems of the past function simultaneously on three levels. The corporeal, the corporeal of waking consciousness, the spiritual of dream, and the ineffable of the absolutely unknowable. The term meaning can refer only to the first two, but these today are in charge of science, which is the province, as we have said, not of symbols, but of signs. The ineffable, the absolutely unknowable, can only be sensed. It's the province of art, which is not expression merely, or even primarily, but a quest for and formulation of experience, evoking energy-waking images, yielding what Sir Herbert Reed has aptly termed a sensuous apprehension of being. The book Signs and Symbols, it states, uh, quote, a symbol is a visual image or sign representing an idea, a deeper indicator of a universal truth, end quote. So I'm going to go through um, some important symbols that we all see. Um, the first one is the yin-yang symbol which uh, represents duality and balance in the universe. The, the dark swirl is associated with shadows, femininity, and the trough of a wave. And the yang, the light swirl, represents brightness, passion, and growth. Yin is the, the black side with the white dot in it, and the yang is the white side with the black dot in it. And many tangible dualities, such as light and dark, sun and moon, electrical, magnetic, male and female, active and passive, yes and no, on and off, uh, fire and water, expanding and contracting, um, can be represented. The small dots within each of the two energies, represented by the black and white, symbolize, symbolize that there is always some yin within yang and vice versa. So, you know, if you're going through a really beautiful time, you know, it's not going to last forever, and there's, you know, probably some problems within it too, but, 
you know, by the same token, if, if you're really having a hard time, there's, you know, usually a silver lining that, that's in there too. So, um, you have the peace sign, and it's interesting to me that the peace sign that of um, coming together in unison actually has three sections, although to the two lines merge together as, as it goes up. And when holding up the peace sign with two fingers, we actually split the fingers apart in a V shape. I mean, you'd think the symbol would be two fingers together to you know show solidarity, but and the word peace is actually a homophone of the word peace, P-I-E-C-E, which is signifies separateness or individuals, individualism. Um, the heart symbol, it, it dawned on me that the symbol people draw for the heart, you know, like on computers, it's like a less than sign and a three. Maybe you turn it upright. At least the top portion is representing a, a toroidal field of the heart torus. An EEG designed to read brain waves can read the heart's frequency spectrum from three feet away without electrodes. And I was really fascinated by this image of, of the shape of the heart's energy field. The, the heart's electromagnetic frequency arcs out from the heart and back in the form of a torus field. And the torus allows a vortex of energy to form, which bends back along itself and re-enters itself. So is it just a coincidence that both the heart and the Earth's electromagnetic fields form the shape of a torus? Uh, the cross. The cross may ultimately be traced back to the four cardinal directions uh, superimposed over the sun. And that symbol is called the, the solar cross. Um, Caduce, the caduceus is a medical symbol and represents the staff of Hermes, the Greek god, the founder of Hermeticism. And the staff has two serpents entwined, intertwined around it. The staff represents our spinal column and the serpent, the kundalini energy or wave that rises. The wings represent the two sides of our brain hemispheres and it's also symbolized by the serpent crucified on a pole or a vertical cross. God told Moses to make a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. The Lord said to Moses, make a snake and put it up on a pole. Um, then you have the dollar sign, which is another form of the caduceus, where the S is the serpent and the vertical line is the pole. The infinity symbol looks to me like a Mobius strip, which is a strip twisted once and joined at the ends. So like a circle or zero, it has no beginning or end. And it shows the traveling in and out between dimensions. It's also the number eight turned sideways, or the um, Ouroboros. The Ouroboros um, is the snake that eats its own tail. The Ouroboros has been said to have a meaning of infinity or wholeness. It was adopted as a symbol of Gnosticism and Hermeticism, and most notably in alchemy. Via medical uh, alchemical tradition, the symbol entered Renaissance magic and modern symbolism, often taken to symbolize introspection, the eternal return, or psych cyclicality, especially in the sense of something constantly recreating itself. It also represents the infinite cycle of nature's endless creation and destruction, life and death. A snake is a symbol of transformation. A serpent sheds its skin. In Gnosticism, a serpent biting its tail symbolized eternity in the soul of the world. There is a serpent that encircles the world egg. The Gnostic Pistis Sophia describes the or Ouroboros as a 12-part dragon surrounding the world with his tail in its mouth. This, um, the world egg or Orphic egg or cosmic egg, egg shows the, the serpent entwined around an egg. And typically the world egg is a beginning of some sort in the universe where some primordial being comes into existence by hatching from the egg, sometimes laying on the primordial waters of the earth. Um, the excellent website VigilanceCitizen.com has an article entitled Top 10 Most Sinister PsyOps Mission Patch, Patches, and some of which feature dragons, snakes, wizards, above or surrounding the earth, overseeing it. Um, up there, Apollo patches have some interesting um, logos, too. Um, you have these Medici lions, or Chinese guardian lions, which are um, a lion with one paw on top of a sphere or globe, implying power over the world. It's maybe symbolic of the Demiurge, who has the head of a lion. Star or pinnacle in Babylonian drawings, um, where it makes the pattern uh, the planet Venus makes. If, if you look at any octave on a piano, you'll have 12 keys, 7 white and 5 black. And this is called the pentatonic scale because there are 5 black keys. It, if you take the 12 notes, starting with D, and put them on a circle like the hours on a clock, and connect the black keys, 
you get an inverted pentagram or the goat head of Mendez. So since the pentagram is used for invoking demons, I would imagine the shape is conducive to the ratcheting or spiraling up of uh, up or down of energy between octaves or dimensional realms. Uh, it's just a theory. Um, the symbol of the shell, um, the symbolic of uh, Botticelli's painting, The Birth of Venus. So it's um, the shell is probably a symbol for Venus. It depicts the goddess, uh, the, the painting depicts the, the goddess Aphrodite or Venus arriving at the shore after her birth when she had emerged from the sea fully grown. And in the center, the newly born goddess Venus stands nude in a giant scallop shell. The phoenix is a symbol of resurrection or reincarnation, being born again or rising from the ashes of death, the firebird. Um, in the book Masonic and Occult Symbols Illustrated, it says, most occultists believe that the phoenix is a symbol of Lucifer who is cast down in flames and who they think will one day rise triumphant, end quote. Um, the phoenix is an Egyptian symbol of rebirth and immortality. And Manly P. Hall wrote in his book, The Secret Teaching of All Ages, he says, To the ancient mystics, the phoenix was the most appropriate symbol of the immortality of the human soul. For just as the phoenix was reborn out of its own dead self seven times, seven so again and again, the spiritual nature of man rises triumphant from his dead physical body. But evil hermetists her, her, uh, regarded the phoenix as a symbol of the accomplishment of alchemical transmutation, a process equivalent to human regeneration. The name phoenix was also given to one of the secret alchemical formula. End quote. The lotus flower is a symbol of enlightenment, um, its awareness and beauty, and it refers to the growing habit of the rooting in mud and pushing up through the water to bloom, which is what the lotus flower does. In Buddhist symbolism, the lotus is symbolic of purity of the body, speech, and mind, as while rooted in the mud, its flowers blossom on long stalks as if floating above the muddy waters of attachment and desire. It's also symbolic of detachment as drops of water easily slide off its petal. A lotus flower begins growing at the bottom of a muddy, murky pool and slowly emerges toward the surface bursting out of the water into a beautiful blossom. And during the night, the lotus closes and sinks under the water and emerges again with the sunlight of a new day. The mud symbolizes the hardships and difficulties of life, the mud. Uh, the triangle or pyramid, I already mentioned that. Um, the all-seeing eye, uh, which is connected with the evil eye. Um, in the book Morals and Dogmas, the 33-degree mason uh, Albert Pike writes, our lodges are said to be due east and west because the master represents the rising sun. The sun, his, is the all-seeing eye in our lodges, end quote. So, you know, the eye of Horus has been said to be the, uh, I think it's the eye of divine providence or something like that. And the, the shape of the eye of Horus seems to correspond to the shape of the corpus callosum or the thalamus, the medulla umbligata, and the hypothalamus, which contains the pineal gland in the human brain. The pine cone at the top of the Pope's staff is symbolic of the third eye because it's shaped like a pine cone. Um, the website thirdeyepinecones.com says, quote, The Egyptian staff of Osiris, dating back to approximately 1224 B.C., depicts two intertwining serpents rising up to meet at a pine cone. Modern scholars and philosophers have noted the staff's symbolic parallels to the Indian Kundalini, the spiritual energy in the body depicted as coiled serpents, rising up from the base of the spine to the third eye, pineal gland, in the moment of enlightenment. Uh, it continues, it says, Shiva, the most prominent god in the Hindu tradition, is consistently depicted with a head or coiled hair, shaped and marked similarly to a pine cone and interwoven with a serpent or serpents. Uh, it also says, a statue of the Mexican god, Chico Metcoto, um, between seven snakes, again depicts the deity offering forth pine cones in one hand and an evergreen tree in the other. It also says, Romans later built an enormous bronze sculpture, the Pigma, Pigna, in the shape of a huge pine cone three stories tall. According to a popular medieval legend, the sculpture stood on top of the Pantheon as a lid for the round opening in the center of the building's vault. The Pigna is confirmed to have served as a large fountain overflowing with water next to the temple of Isis in ancient Rome. However, the gigantic statue now sits directly in front of the Catholic Vatican in the court of the pine cone. 
Um, it says, Catholic religion tradition is intricately interwoven with pine cones, perhaps most prominently atop the sacred staff carried by the Pope himself. The coat of arms of the Holy See, found on the Vatican flag, among other places, features a stacking of three crowns suspiciously similar in shape to a pine cone, end quote. And I wonder if the unfinished pyramid symbolizes the shape of the human body during meditation when the kundalini is ascended up through the chakras and activating the third eye, pineal gland. Um, I don't know. The, the Freemason uh, G, uh, G is Sol. I think I mentioned all this, but uh, the fifth tone of the musical scale, C, um, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti. Uh, the symbol used for the fifth tone of the diatonic scale is G, and of course, Sol is the name of our sun. Um, the labyrinth, uh, may have evolved from the sacred spiral as a metaphor for life's journey. I think of it as the journey within our multidimensional selves. In fact, many walk it as a transformational spiritual tool. Unlike a maze, which has the complexity of paths one can get lost in, the labyrinth has one path which frees the one's mind and allows them to tap into their spiritual center. But there, there's a minotaur that dwelt at the center of the labyrinth, which was an elaborate maze-like construction designed by the architect Daedalus and his son Icarus on the command of King Minos of Crete, and its function was to hold the, the uh, Minotaur within. Baphomet, um, in his book Tr Transcendental Magic, Eliphas Levi explains the now famous image of Baphomet. He says, quote, We recur once more to that terrible number 15, symbolized in the tarot by a monster throned upon an altar, mitered and horned, having a woman's breast and the generative organs of a man, a chimera, a malformed sphinx, a synthesis of deformities. Below this figure, we read a frank and simple inscription, the devil. Yes, we confront here that phantom of all terrors, the dragon of all theogenies, the Araman of the Persians, the Typhon of the Egyptians, and the Python of the Greeks, the old serpent of the Hebrews, the fantastic monster, the nightmare, um, the gargoyle, the great beast of the Middle Ages, and worse than all these, the Baphomet of the Templars, the bearded idol of the alchemists, the obscene deity of Mendes, the goat of the Sabbath. He further says, quote, The astral light is the universal seducer. To some extent indifferent in itself, it lends itself to good as to evil. It transmit light, transmits light and propagates darkness. It may be called equally Lucifer and Lucifuge. And the unknown god... W.T. Smith and Martin P. Starr quotes um, from Aleister Crowley's Occult Mass says, quote, and I believe in the serpent and the lion, the mystery of mysteries, and his name's, name is Baphomet. But Le Levi explains that the Baphomet is a symbol of enlightenment based on hermetic principles. And he, he himself created a, the figure represents as above, so below. But um, then you have the owl. I think the owl is symbolic of wisdom, for the owl can see in the dark what others can't. But it should also be noted that the owl is a predatory bird. Bohemian Grove uses the owl as a symbol and features a giant 40-foot stone owl at its creation of a care ceremony. The owl was a symbol of the Roman goddess Minerva, who was a goddess of war and wisdom. And it's also quite possibly a nana, as the uh, Bernie relief depicts a winged woman with webbed feet atop two lions flanked by an owl on both sides. That's Inanna, one of the main goddesses of Sumerian religion who became um, Aphrodite and Venus. And, uh, yeah, we mentioned the torch. Um, yeah, the Sumerian texts have this to say about Inanna, who's called Queen of Heaven, also uh, Ishtar, Isis, Venus and later associated with Lucifer by the church. It says, uh, but anyway, look at how they describe her as a goddess who holds a torch similar to the goddess Columbia um, or even the Statue of Liberty. It says, quote, I shall greet the great lady of heaven, Anna. I shall greet the holy torch who fills the heavens, the light, Anna, her who shines like daylight, the great lady of heaven, Anna. For the young lady, I shall sing a song about her grandeur, about her greatness, about her exalted dignity, about her radiantly ascending at evening, about her filling the heaven like a holy torch. All the countries are building a house for you as for the risen sun, a shining torch is assigned to you, the light of the land. And in a hymn to Anana, it says, Your divinity shines in the pure heavens like Nana or Utu. Your torch lights up the corners of heaven, turning darkness into light. 
Um, let's see. Sacred geometry is, I guess, another form of symbolism. Um, the word geometry comes from the Greek words geos, meaning earth, and metron, meaning to measure, which together literally translate as the measuring of the earth. It emphasizes uh, phi, the golden ratio or golden mean, the divine proportion, uh, Fibonacci numbers. It can be seen in nature in the branching of trees and leaves, a nautilus shell, the labyrinth, and the sacred spiral, which can even be seen in galaxies. Other forms of sacred geometry are mandalas, Metatron's cube, the flower of life, the seed of life, the harmony of the spheres, and even in crop circles. Um, it has been included in art and in the architecture of churches, temples, mosques, cathedrals, and monuments such as the Great Pyramid. The flower of life and seed of life designs may actually correspond to the planetary or world energy grid, which keeps us trapped or imprisoned here. It's reminiscent of me uh, to me of a golden web of life. The Greek mystery schools taught that there were five perfect forms, the platonic solids, the tetrahedron, hexahedron, octahedron, the decahedron, and the icosahedron. Um, Symbols and dreams. Um, Joseph Campbell said, myths are the world's dreams. They are our typical dreams and uh, deal with, or archetypal dreams and deal with great human problems. Myths and dreams come from the same place. They come from realizations of some kind that then have to find expression in symbolic form, end quote. Uh, the website dreamjournal.net has an extensive symbol dictionary to help interpret your dreams. Uh, there's different ones, such as typical dreams is you're being chased, and which could be due to, I don't know, maybe shadow beings trying to feed off our negative energies, such as fear, stress, guilt, etc. There are flying dreams, which could be a sign of astral travel. Dreamjournal.net says to fall from certainty about things, fall in your own opinion of self, fall in faith, fall in power, in favor, falling in love. Um, isn't it interesting that, that you know we, we are said to fall in love? Anyway, fear of not being in control or fear of danger or general anxiety. Occasionally a fall in a dream is a sudden release of tension. And You know, they say we fall asleep too. You fall asleep and then you wake up. So I think that's depicting the different consciousness levels you know, or brain states, the, the waves that are frequency increasing and decreasing. Um, falling, this could be the remembrance of the soul coming back down into the physical body. And then I have a lot of dreams where I'm like arguing or happen to justify something. And once again, it could be due to the shadow beings trying to feed off our, our energies. Um, uh, spiders and predators. Uh, Dreamjournal.net says, most likely the spiders are connected with feelings of repulsion or anxiety. It can also represent the being caught up in subtle feelings we try to brush off or avoid. The caught in the web situation. Therefore, it sometimes indicates a mother's power as in the way we are caught in our web of desires, emotions, and anxieties, or even our own feelings of dependence and need. Um, tarot cards. Um, our deck of playing cards originally came from tarot cards, and the four suits were originally uh, coins or pinnacles, cups, wands, and swords which correspond to the four elements, water, air, fire, and earth. Taro means ta, ra, which means the real, the wheel, or the way or route, and signifies man's alchemical journey. The first card is the fool, the enlightened man, which ultimately leads to the moon, the sun, judgment, and then to the last card, the world, which is thought to represent starting it all over again or reincarnation. So man, man's ultimate judgment is in the sun, where the heart is weighed, and if it's pure enough, it'll pass through the fire, and if not, it's sent back again. So these games represent purifying the soul by progressing from the heavier earth elements, such as lead, and turning lead into gold, which is the sun. Games represent the token man as a fool or a pipsqueak pawn in the game who moves across the board or electromagnetic field until it can reach, a, reach and pip through the other side to win the crown or be crowned, that is, become a king or a sun god. Um... Every card in the major arcana embodies an ar archetypal figure. Um, this is from Tarot for Writers by Corinne Kenner. She says, The fool is the happy wanderer who sees the world through the eyes of a child. 
Most tarot experts agree that the fool represents each of us, naive travelers through life on a grand adventure, out to learn whatever experience the tarot can teach us. The magician is the skilled and cunning master of all he surveys. He represents an individual in control of life's tools and techniques, like those on the table in front of him. Um, in the interest of time, I'm just going to read what the other ones are. The, the high priestess, the empress, the emperor, the hierophant, the lovers, the chariot, strength, the hermit, the will of fortune, justice, the hangman, death, temperance, the devil, the tower, the star, the moon, the sun, judgment, and the world. And of course, you can check out on my notes um, what the full um, explanations for each of those are. There's this uh, Illuminati, Illuminati card game made by Stephen Jackson Games, um, and it has a, a card deck, and it's been credited as predicting 9-11, the death of Princess Di, as well as the recent shooting in Las Vegas. Um, the secret master card reads, quote, Everything in the world is controlled by a small evil group to which ultimately no one, know, no one we know belongs, end quote. The Princess Die card reads, Princess Die and her puppets are immune to attack by your rival's peaceful or liberal groups. The terrorist nuke card shows the twin towers with flames and smoke coming out in the exact same place where the towers were hit. The Pentagon card shows the Pentagon on fire after being hit by terrorists. Um, these other cards, um, other cards are the Center for Disease Control, uh, which mentions biological warfare. Um, some other cards are Benefit Concert, oil spill, nuclear accident, epidemic, flesh-eating bacteria, rewriting history, savings and loan scam, NASA, Templars, Jihad, criminal overlords, earth magic, political correctness, combined disasters, tidal wave, kill for peace, security leak, Vatican City, New World Order military industrial complex, uh, gun control, mistaken identity, Barcodes, sweeping reforms, upheaval, martial law, Wall Street, subliminals, druids, hex, conspiracy theorists, tabloids, vampires, uh, alien abduction, necronomicon, population reduction, and World War III. The Las Vegas shooting took place during a country music festival called the Route 91 Harvest Music Festival. Um, for these types of situations as well as wars, are designed as harvest for, for souls. The venue where the concert was held was tangent to the Luxor Hotel, which is a giant pyramid with an Egyptian sphinx. Uh, the word Luxor comes from the root word Lux, which means light. Those who are students of gematria and numerology point out the killer was said to have been shooting from the 32nd floor, which is linked to Freemasonry. I mean, I saw when it was depicted on the news or whatever, I, I tried to count up the number of levels of the floors and... I only saw like 25 or 26. I was trying to count real fast, but I'm not sure it was on the 32nd floor. I mean, I don't know. But uh, it's kind of interesting. The Steve Jackson Illuminati card deck has a card entitled Las Vegas, which basically predicted a shooting like this. And the card shows two playing cards, the jack and ace of spades, to symbolize the blackjack games played at the casinos in Las Vegas. Now, the value of a jack is 10, and an ace can be 1. The shooting took place on October 1st, or 10-1. Country music star Jason Aldean was performing when the shooting began, and unbelievably, he has a tattoo, you guessed it, the jack and ace of spades, um, just like the card shows, with horns protruding from the top of the cards and beneath uh, a black sun. Now, jack is known as an assassin, an assassin for the queen, and a jack is also symbolic for the devil. An ace can be thought of as a wizard, a common man who can be worth far less than the royal face cards, but also can be superior to them if, in value if his wizardry is realized. But um, that's some interesting symbolism right there. It, were you, have you ever seen that? In some of the videos? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Incredible yeah. stuff. It really is. So that's basically um, all that my. Been a stuff. little bit the, um, the loss. Vegas sh shooting. Have you had a? Have you been able to spend some time looking at that? With at, at um, how deep that. I've goes? watched some of the videos on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, he, he, your guess is as good as mine is whether how much of it you know use crisis. You know, a lot of people are quick to say, "Oh, it's all crisis actors. Not, nobody was killed." And 
I mean, I, I don't know which what the real truth is, you know, but I, I found the symbolism interesting. And of course, right away they're they're you know they're talking more and more gun control, and um, immediately there's just a lot of interesting, questionable things going on behind the scenes there. Yeah, yeah, you get a lot of changes to the laws in regards to our freedoms, um, civil liberties. We're having it here. They bring in new new laws after these uh, shootings. But it could be a mix. Uh, we discussed it could be a mix of real and staged. Right. Um, it's a rabbit hole, you know. Um, you just hear hear a lot of a lot of weird things, you know, a lot of weird things around that still going on. I right. guess uh, people move on with their lives and they forget it pretty quickly. Um, but there are a lot of strange events sur- surrounding um, that, that shooting. Um, very extremely dark, anyway. Whichever way you want to look at it. Yeah, it's it's just a horrible situation all the way around. Yeah. It's a it's a dark uh, world we live in for sure. When this stuff's taking place all the time, you know. Um, yeah, it's, it's a crazy just, crazy place we live in. That's for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's uh, well, you know, um, it being we don't get a lot of it here, but just wondering because you 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 know. You're obviously in the yeah. U.S. Um, being able to watch what's happening and keep an eye on it, you know. Um, but who knows who with this? You know, it's all over the shop. It's, um, uh, indeed. So it's hard to tell. Hard to tell. Yeah. Um, so I guess, like in in summary, I mean, yeah, the 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 trickster tests the fool or every man on his journey, but. We can slay the dragon within us and become the hero. And we're currently temporarily bound to the impressions from the lower frequency or light that's received through the senses. But the silver lining is that the light hidden behind the clouds breaks through at times to shine. And our spirit is a pearl hidden within, which can be remembered by clamming down on the, the dross material from the pressures of the world. And like the lotus flower, we can rise from the murky and muddy depths bloom and emerge above the waters into a more pure light and like the lily earthworm we can we can build a new home and be transformed into a spirit that's free and able to fly and soar like like an eagle above the storm like a diamond made from the black coal via pressure and stress and like metal that's forged and refined or purified into pure gold by trials of fire and we can become the one sperm that penetrates the egg to be born into a larger reality we can be the pipsqueak who's able to navigate the black and white dualistic game board of life and become a king. Our character can stop playing the role in this divine play or cosmic movie and leave the game we're playing. Like Captain Janeway, we can resist the Archon posing as our father, trying to lure us into his matrix of light to feed him. Like Captain Kirk and his crew, we can see beyond the illusions of Landru and his Archons to prevent being absorbed into the body we can overcome our overlords, such as Corellin, who serve the overmind that wishes to z- dissolve us into the white light. We can be the true man to, able to see through the set of this reality television show and realize it's all just a program. We can be like number six, the number of man, the everyman prisoner, and hold fast to our sovereignty and earn the right to leave the village. We can be the one, like Neo, and leave the Matrix by transmuting the shadow into light, ascending within. We can be like Dorothy, see beyond the projected illusions of the wizard, and use our divine spark within to wake up from this bad dream in order to return home. And like the Flammarion engraving, we can be the seeker who discovers the truth and is able to pierce the veil, think outside the hive mind collective of the world, see and move into the higher realms beyond matter by using gnosis, that is wisdom, a pure heart, and pure imagination to return to our true spiritual home. So, um, Nicely said. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's, it's, um, um, yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? I guess it's um, all up to us at the end of the day. Mm, so, exactly you right. know, it's, um, I guess it is true that, yeah, the language... Um, is creating a language as we're using it today is creating this this prison for us that we don't even not even aware of. Mm-hmm. How much of our language is on your website? Would you say is languid? Uh, well, language, that was one language. thing I wanted to add. It was you know, 
I only had so much time and I kept adding stuff and stuff. And I was going to add this, and I forgot, but now that you mention it, it reminds me that, you know, we should try to be conscious um, when we speak and use a conscious language. Like when I, when I use the word it, I try not to give it um, the, the, the word power. Like I, I try not to phrase it so that it gives whatever the, that subject it is um, positive or powerful or, you know, um, reinforcement. So, I, I, I'm just very conscious about the way I speak when I speak to people, and um, that's like something to keep in mind. And, and when I tell people, you know, from my solution is is to maybe kind of use a mantra like uh, higher frequency now or move inward. I think language is is a trap, and so you don't really want to use the words. You know, you want to. It's more like holding in the image or the the thought, the idea in your mind, and and just um, keeping it there, and 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 you know. I, you know, using words is probably not a good idea because all these words have been um, crafted to to be used against us. You know, so that was just something I wanted to mention too. That it's it's important maybe not to use words, but just to the idea or or image in our mind because that's what imagination is 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 imaging, right? Could we say, uh, looking at that, could we say, watch your language or mind your language? Yeah. Is that You're what we would say to, to people? Watch your language? <laughs> yeah. Is that, uh, is that the a correct thing to say in regards to this, you think? Watch your language. Um... Watch yep. your language. Okay. You know, they, they say to kids, mind your language when they, they say nasty things or whatever, but there's also watch your language. And people would say, how can you watch language? Oh, I see what you're saying. Like parents, or somebody will say, watch your language. I see watch your saying. language, yeah. But it just means, if you look at it and lay it out, it kind of just means to, to be mindful of what you're saying and um, right. careful. So, I, yeah, mm-hmm. that's what I was mean. Watch that's your language. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're right. They, they, I haven't thought of that. Yeah, they're constantly saying the word. When your kid um, runs, you're saying, watch your language. Yeah, it's 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 just crazy, you know, like um, language in itself, you know. I mean, I've heard people say when you, you know, when you look at uh, olden day newspapers and writings, how beautiful language once was, uh, English language, you know, how um, how amazing it, it was and, and compared to what we do today because we're losing our language in, in, in a lot of ways, you know. And, um, and, and if you do use language, I mean, affirmations and, and constantly using positive reinforcement but you know of your own self-worth and, and things like that could be a, um, a powerful tool to do but yeah, I mean, of course help. like I said you have to be careful with the, the actual language you're using but you know if your mind is, is is your intention is probably the most important thing so if your intention you're holding fast to that intention in your mind then, then it, that could overcome the actual language of the words I mean it's hard to say because like I was talking about the Tibetan Buddhists and stuff that use those those plates and I mean the actual vibrations of the syllables and sounds and stuff it really does um, shape the matter around us so um, I don't know <laughs> it's um it, it's weird looking at how much language we've lost and don't use today especially younger generations and then of course the uh, you know the smartphones and technology and texting and and emailing and all that you know in the older days it was you know you had to write a letter and all this sort of stuff you know. And um, there's a uh, kids movie that's come out here in Australia, very popular, called the Emoji Movie. Oh yeah! And, um, it's like all these thousands of emoji figures that I've uh, seen on social media in the last couple yeah. of years, and they've really taken hold now. And you know, I try to put up a lot of um, articles and things up there, but you know, half the people now don't even comment anymore. They just leave a an emoji. A face, you know, like a sad face or a happy face, and it's like <laughs> they don't even bother writing anymore. But you're getting right. the same with texting as well, and they're shortening down the every word and the language. Is. Yeah, and 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 this movie kind of glamorized, in a way, at how you know, hey, you know, I mean, why do you even need to write a text message anymore when you can just send yeah. one of these little characters, yeah, you know? And, picture um, yeah. speaks a thousand words, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, is this? I, I don't know if it's a good thing in a way because then just people aren't talking anymore. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> They're not going to get into trouble, but it's kind of scary. The idea you know? across, and the, you know, maybe it, maybe it could be a good thing. I mean, I think all, all, ultimately, ideally, telepathy would would be the way to go. I mean, telepathy and empathy, where you're not using the because I mean, telepathy. There's no secrets involved. You know what other people's intentions or thoughts are, and um, 
So you can't have secrets or lies or, or evil thoughts. I mean, I guess you could, but it, it's not going to last too long. Yeah, well, I, I, I guess the technology is doing all the, the, the thinking for us now. And you look at the iPhones, and most people use the spelling corrector, and mm -hmm. um, so it's correcting their, their words. So you're just wondering about um, young kids coming through schools now, you know, and kind of looking at some of the material they're learning, and it's... It's not too good, you know. Um, it seems right. to be going backwards in a, in a lot of ways. But, um, yeah, I look at that as well as their technology seems to be just sort of taking over. So we get to the point now where most people couldn't even be bothered um, saying anything or texting anything or even texting or writing a word. Um, you know, it's getting like that now uh, in that yeah, way. Yeah, and that seems kind point. of false to me, a bit, pl bit false, you know, very false. Um, and the other thing, like the social media and stuff, is it creates um, just very impatient people. That I mean, they wouldn't, yeah, they couldn't yeah. sit down and read a book for uh, oh. a few hours or something. Like it just it gives you short attention. It, it encourages short attention spans. You know, that's right. They've got all these fidget toys just, now, these fidget spinners and things they buy where they fidget with all day. Um, I mean, you're lucky if you get so one fidgety. one line out of somebody or you right. send a message to them. It's just all just short phrases and. Um, yeah, it's funny. Well, I did um, just recently see the new Blade Runner movie. I think um, oh, it, was, it was an amazing movie. I, I really liked it. I would encourage people to to see this. I, I think it's one. Of, it's an amazing, ama incredible film. I don't think I've really ever seen anything like this. I saw it on a wow. big big screen with amazing sound, but uh, mm -hmm. he, he was saying in some reviews that it would challenge people. It's over two hours, you know, and it's um. It's this kind of slow mystery, as you know, with the original Blade Runner. It's not much action, but it's there's a lot of stuff in there. I think you would really like, and you'll pick up a lot of stuff in there. But it's, it's incredibly beautifully shot uh, movie. But it's um, it will test a lot of people's patience as well, you know, because um, uh, there's just these long drawn out scenes and quiet moments all through the film. It's it's not an action type film, but it's um, it was amazing, amazing to see something like that. Uh, made. I don't think they can make uh, movies like that in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of the the name of the the guy who who wrote it. He he, um, it's, it's just escaping me, it's eluding me right now. But he wrote a lot of stuff, uh, and he's considered like a Gnostic or whatever. But he had like a lot of ideas that were living in a simulation. And um, golly, what was his name? I can't believe I can't remember it. But um, that was one of his his better better writings for sure. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's, uh, is it, uh, looks like Dennis, um, Yenevik, um, direct, I'm director of that. Else. Yeah, amazing. Anyway, go along and see it if you can at the, on the big screen. It's, um, a really incredible, mm -hmm. incredible film. Um, kind of sad as well. I, you know, of course, does get into the technology side and, um, you know, um, people with, you know, these uh, being soulless and, um, you know, all of that. It's kind of sad and there's there's kind of love attached in and there's a whole lot of emotions going on. Um, but, you know, with today's age, just I was reading good articles on it. You know, people want to go in now for, you know, no more than 80 minutes and smash, bang, blow up, crash, boom, <laughs> you know, the fast and the furious and uh, get out of there, you know. Um, some of these movies like this can be very, very challenging and as you said before, yeah, as uh, attention spans of of people now and, and younger people and they get very frustrated very quickly because uh, we've talked about this before, I think it, the worry is is because uh, technology is giving us everything we want so quickly. Um, you know, you want something, uh, and you just go on your phone or your your, your uh, desktop or whatever your your um, your iPad, and there it is in a second. You know, anything you want, and so they get very upset um, and um, cranky very quickly if they can't get access to what they want so quick. Philip K. Dick, who I was trying to think of. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, he he's a very interesting guy. Amazing, he, yeah. His work. That's right. Yeah, I downloaded a whole bunch of his books. Yeah, yeah. He he had some interesting comments, and I was going to add them to my website because they're so profound. And and um, he was a visionary. Um, it's just amazing. He had these alternate alternate realities that he could see into, and and he um, it's just an amazing, amazing person. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, I think you can hear a helicopter. I think they're coming to get me, Wayne. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> the exactly. black helicopter yeah, above my exactly. my house. <laughs> Take me away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no. I do, I I do um, don't get to the movies much, really, at all. Uh, you know, to be honest. But um, a friend invited me, and it was good to sit down and watch something um, like that. You know. Yeah, the um, other movie I want to yeah, watch is uh, yeah. Frequency. Have you have you seen that one? I think I heard the one. Yeah, yeah. It's about near-death experiences. It, That's it was, right. It was a, I guess a continuation of one made um, a few decades ago, but um, where the the medical students or whatever are like um, in a controlled environment. You know, they're basically a flat line, uh, yeah. inducing near-death experiences. And, and but yeah, in this scenario, all of a sudden they're either being terrorized by some entity out there. You know, which I thought was interesting. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's always that uh, <laughs> fear mongering and demonization, isn't it? I don't think they're all showing the love and light, like you know, the near death experiences. Um, It'd be interesting before. though if you if you are experimenting with death. You know, it's it's not like suicide, mm-hmm. but you're purposely mucking around with that. Um, you know, um, it'd be interesting. Yeah, just what people would see, uh, what kind of state of mind they were in. You know, um, right. A that, lot of I them think, yeah, interesting. people have. They do suicide. I mean, they have more negative experiences. That's right. Mm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I have some books on it. So uh, people had mm-hmm. uh, those kind of experiences uh, after death. Yeah, very interesting. But uh, a lot of information today, um, yeah, <laughs> to say the least. I hope, um, but I hope it was uh, what you had in mind. I don't know. I was just yeah, scrambling, there, oh, trying no, to figure no. out everything I could think of. I was trying to put it in there. No, I'm just sitting here back listening, and um, yeah, it's kind of like listening to an old audio book or something. <laughs> it's, yeah. Um, it's good. I think that people like that. If they're working or doing things, they can put that on. But, uh, they can listen to it in the ch- car or something, or while they're at work, and um, it's like, like you're saying, it's like an audio book. Yeah, it's just uh, we try to make it uh, continuous. That's why you're doing it that way here. We do it this way, that way, you know, just let you run through it all so it's, um, you know, keeps that flow. But uh, I think another really interesting chunk to add to uh, what we've done is there any um, any other um, of these types of shows you would you would be looking at later on? Um, cause we've done, done quite a lot. If I look at your website, you've got... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there is. There's, there's music, there's, um, I'm really getting into this reverse speed stuff, you know, I think you can yeah, find, it yeah. can reveal some, some truths, I mean, like, if, that's why I'm trying to, like, you know, listen to the Pope, listen to Billy Graham, listen to mm-hmm. astronauts, you know, people that are in, you know, supposed positions of power, of, or, or in, in the know of certain things, and, and if you can find out, and I try to zero in on some of the more important quotes, you know, like, okay, I'll, oh, yeah, I should look up George Bush and when he talks about the New World Order, let's see what he's really saying, you know. So, uh, if so anybody kind of political has any stuff, good yeah. ideas for, for stuff to study. I, well, I tried to l- listen to Hitler, but evidently that's all, all his speeches were in German, so I don't know German. No. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it is amazing, the uh, political <laughs> scene, isn't it, with, um, you know, the politicians and we have prime ministers or whatever, just the way they... They talk um, to the media. Mm-hmm. It's it's funny. They're very evasive and they don't ever answer questions directly. And it's just when you um, listen in to some of the things they say. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then you you get to the end of it and you're like, well, he didn't answer the question and we didn't really get anywhere there. It's yeah. um, politicians have a and I wonder they probably study that, but they do have a, a great a very yeah. I wonder if they, it's talk. not part of it that they know that maybe they can be reversed and and. You know, so now if they're just saying a bunch of nothing, what are you really going to get out of it? Even if you do um, first their language. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What um, so what did you use to do all these reversings? Um, you just do it with a machine, or you do it with a computer? What's the bit, what sort of way? A is computer. A way? Um, yeah. I'm kind of lazy, so I'd go out on YouTube and I would. Um, there's a website that lets you. Um, extract the, the MP3 audio file from a, from a YouTube video. So I was like, you know, whether it's a song, I would just play the video and get the URL and then paste in the URL and then it, it just extracts the MP3 and lets you download it. So once I got it down to my computer, I have this um, software um, tool called uh, Cool Edit. Cool Edit 2000, I think it is. <laughs> I'm running old, some old stuff. But, um, you can put it in there and then you can like select the entire audio wave and then you can um, 
uh, there's like a transform tool or something like that, which lets you reverse it. And then you can also, if it's too soft, sometimes I'll, I'll increase the, the ampli- I'll amplify it by like two or three, five hundred percent. So it's louder. And then, um, the other nice tool is it lets you, sometimes I have to slow it down because the, the, the reversals come really quick. And sometimes if someone's talking fast, like I'm kind of a talk faster uh, or fast talker, um, you, you can slow it down by 90%, 80%, um, or more even. And so that helps it easier to hear that mm. and I'll just sit there and I'll just listen to the entire thing you know the song's a few minutes long it doesn't take long to listen to it backwards and I'll see if any anything jumps out at me that that I can hear and if not then sometimes I'll listen to the song forward and I'll, if there's like a really key phrase of the song then I'll just highlight that part and then reverse it and see if I hear anything it does does so. go back I remember kind of in high school people talking about records you know vinyl records of um, <clears throat> heavy metal bands maybe bands like slayer and all this that if you played stuff backwards there was all this stuff in there you know people, <laughs> people were scared to do it you know and i thought well, was that just a ploy by the record companies to, to put that sort of stuff in but yeah it some like of it's a mix intentional. Mm. that's what they call it back masking mm. but i think um there's definitely like some of that stuff in the in the stairway to heaven. I don't think it was intentional. I think it was just because that song was written like in like basically a night or something like that. And he was like said almost like he channeled it. That, you know, they were talking about how, in interviews how they were sitting by the fire and that he, you know, Robert Plant just almost was just channeling like he wrote it, boom, 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 kind of thing. And um, it's, it's such a deep song. It's really well written. Um, it's just uh, you know I think he did channel it from. from mm spirit realm yeah yeah i have to wonder about uh, pink floyd as well i don't know if you've got into there definitely dark side of the moon yeah um, i did dark side of the moon there's there's uh, something i found in the song eclipse but it, it talked about one being one or something like that i mean yeah i was kind of disappointed with dark side i didn't listen to it again <laughs> and, and um it was a long time ago that i did it but um i was hoping to find more <laughs> in dark side yeah. of the moon such a deep it's kind of like I was disappointed with the song Heart, Heart of Gold I was thinking oh man Heart of Gold is going to have a real positive good message good spiritual message and then when you play it backwards he's talking about money it's like alright mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah yeah strange very odd um, yeah interesting stuff well, with, and Sting uh, Sting uh, is, is surprisingly seems like he's kind of Gnostic in that um you know, he, like they had a song called "Spirits in the Material World," and it was, you know, "We Are Spirits in the Material World," and it was from the album "Ghost in the Machine." And then he even had a solo album called uh, "Soul Cages." So, you know, in that song "Spirits in the Material World," he, he talks about our our so-called leaders speak with words they try to jail you. I mean, so it seems like he was kind of kind of knew what was going on. Um, yeah. Beyond some of those guys, they just they sell their soul, and you know maybe he did too. But I mean, at least I don't know. It seems like he is uh, more well read than others. That's right. That's a rabbit hole for yeah. sure. That's a rabbit hole. The uh, what you're doing there, the uh, music. It's uh, it also the one thing that's um, we've gone through it a little bit but uh, one thing I'm noticing now a lot is the um, p- particularly the American you know Hollywood um, music video um, MTV type thing with just the latest um, video clips you watch on YouTube and stuff with the uh, the big stars you know um, you have over there and uh, that you've gone through a lot of the Katy Perry and Beyonce and all these people you know um, there's a whole bunch of mm-hmm. them many 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 um, some of these clips they're putting out are getting very bizarre, uh, very dark yeah. as well, very sexual and very dark and very strange. Um, if people don't seem to, um, you know, I don't, a lot of them are very sugary sort of pop. Um, it's getting further and further away from what actually music should be, but, um, you know, very synthetic yeah. and plastic, but very strange and, and weird and creepy, some of this stuff's I, getting I to keep was, an eye on. It. I thought it was interesting when I... Um reverse the song uh, there's a song Madonna does called Illuminati that I mentioned and you know she's trying to say oh you know it's all good and it's nothing bad you know right right when I reverse it it says collaboration 100% facts snakes sex and the ashcraft I mean she's literally 
saying the stuff that we're talking about. This, you know, the reptilians. She says snakes, and that you just, you just mentioned the sex and all this stuff. She goes sex, and then Ashcraft is to me it's like witchcraft. It has to do with um, ash is, is you know, death or whatever. Um, boom, right there. <laughs> Yeah, keep an, say to people keep an eye on that um, those uh, those videos are unbelievable. Yeah, uh, but yeah, as you get it, you pick up on it pretty quick now. So as as I study it more, you just it sort of displays itself um, to you in, in such a way. You know, it's amazing. It's, uh, yeah, you know, they're not yeah, really they trying to hide it. <laughs> you know, they're pretty. Do you have a chance to listen to any of those? I put up a page with a bunch of. Yeah, that's stuff. a great new page you've uh, added there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just curious to see if, if people are, are hearing what I'm hearing or whether I'm just yeah, you know, I heard a few yeah. Yeah. reading into stuff, you know. But I've got some feedback, and and this woman said, yeah, I heard it. You know, it's like she said, it's, you know, it's kind of hard to hear, but which it is. But she said, yeah, I heard. It. Have you added it to um, Trick by the Light? Have you added the actual section yet? Um, yeah, yeah. Of, of that, uh, what did you call it? Oh, I hadn't put it like a, as a separate section. I just got a link to it. Um, oh, I'm yeah, yeah. Add it, like, after we're done with this interview, I'm going to add it to my language page. Yeah, like, right, uh, right. So people can have a look. Yeah. Here's a, and put it like a big link. I give maybe a, two or three really good examples, and then say, you know, here, you know, for for dozens more, click here. You know? It's a, it's an amazing page because I've been searching stuff online um, here and there, you know, in the past, and. Um, looking at language and things and logos and stuff and I'll uh, pick up a whole bunch of different websites and it's actually linked back to your website. <laughs> it's yeah. actually your info. Um, that yeah, one of the nice things up. is mm. I, get, I get statistics um, on, on my website and I can go through and one of the, the statistics they give me is um, all the pages that link to my, my website. And so I kind of periodically I'll go through there and I'll see like Auric Media and some of these uh, websites that will link to some of my articles. And that's always nice to, to see that people are finding value in it, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it is a great website, trickedbythelight.com. Um, we'll plug in today, plug out today of the uh, Matrix. Anything you want to f- uh, finish up on? Anything at all? No, uh, just um, I love hearing from people and, you know, yeah, check out. Check out those uh, new reversals and let me know if you know if you're hearing what I'm hearing or or not, and uh, or anything else you want to you want to mention to me. Uh, my my uh, email address is Wayne J Bush at gmail dot com. It's W A Y N E the letter J B U S H dot com. No relation to George. <laughs> <laughs> Matter of fact, yeah. I, I <laughs> his speech about the new world order is one of my reversals. That's right. <laughs> and so that that's it. Nothing else? Anything? That's all? Yeah, that's, that's all. Great. I'll put the link up as well. People can uh, send me an email to the crazfiles at mail.com. That's a new one. If they anything, uh, think of anything. And um, I will uh, put this up um, tonight. Um, get it out there for folks. Great. So um, much appreciate your time, and um, I'm sure we can uh, hook in again uh, for another um, show. I gotta thank you, you know, because you um, you get me coming on and, and doing these different topics, and it got me back into the the reverse speech. I'm like, I was trying to think of all these different things about language, language and symbols, and you know, so got me <laughs> doing research. And so I, I'm really appreciative of that. I'll put that up as a, just a little separate link there as well to your reversals page, just so people okay. can get it, and as well as the website. But I'll just put that uh, other link there so people can have a look, uh, listen to the um, links you've put up there with the music. So um, um, have, have, have a look at that. But always um, uh, incredible and uh, inspiring and amazing um, information. So um, you as well. Your website's amazing. All the articles you have, and sometimes I get people to email me, and they're like. Uh, Hey, can we, can we put a link up to your page? Or, and, and, and what they're really linking to is your website. I'm like, well, that's not really what my page. That's Adam's. Yeah. <laughs> so I know you're doing a great great service. With your yeah, people. I try to have a big uh, big link website. Sorry for the bubba there. But um, I try to have a big uh, link sort of website. I know people are busy, and I've just been doing it for years. So I, I try to just put up a lot of stuff and um, a reference kind of website, I mean. And um, that's what I originally did. It was just uh, my original website was just links. Um, so this mm-hmm. one's much nicer, but uh, I feel like I've put up yeah. so much. Uh, I'll be adding more, too, as we go on. Um, 
yeah. of things. I might Amazing. add sort of a section that encompasses sort of all your work as well. Um, oh, yeah. Into the one, I'll just try and work out how to do that. But sort of, um, I've got a sort of um, afterlife and spirituality tab. You know what I mean? Um, that people can go into. But I mean one for this kind of research that I might just put all this work into as well. That yeah. links back. Yeah, um, but it, you know, if, if people have any ideas for for uh, if they have any clips they want to send me and see if I can find reversals in it, or have any ideas for somebody like a movie or or person to to look for. Reversals, and um, I'd be happy to hear for that too. Um, Send it through, yeah, yeah. Well, um, yeah, that's that's a, that's a good idea. Yeah, please do. And um, all right, well, we'll uh, plug out and uh, and uh, keep in touch as always, and um, tune in again soon. Yeah, thank you so much, Adam. Um, all right. Good night. Okay, take care, my friend. All right, you too. Bye.